Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to take you through the very basics and a very practical way of setting up a Git project. So initializing a Git repository and sticking your project uh, that you're working on into that. I'll also show you how to then create a GitHub repository to publicly host that so that other developers can see your code and uh, potentially contribute to it. So we're starting out in a regular project directory. And what we're first going to want to do is actually check that entire directory into our version control system, or VCS. In our case, it's Git. That's just the most popular one around. So you can see we're in our bundle scraper directory, and it contains all kinds of stuff. It's really just a Python program, uh, some other text files, and a vnv, which we'll get to later. That's something we actually don't want to include. That contains binaries and other stuff that we don't necessarily want to check in. To create a git repository, we just type git init dot, which is shorthand for this current directory. So git init this directory. And then when you list it again, you can see that there's a dot git directory, which is invisible by default uh, when you hit list. And that contains the entire state of our git repository. So when you type in git status, you'll see the status of where you are right now. That'll make more sense later. We know we want to get rid of that vnv directory. We don't want to actually put that into our repository. So you can create a git ignore file, dot git ignore. The dot is important. And just paste the path that you want to ignore, that you want git to ignore, in there. So in our case, that's just vnv. We want to not include that. And when you save that file, git knows to look for it. And you can see that when you type git status again, it no longer thinks, it just doesn't see that vnv file anymore and doesn't want to check it in anymore. Uh, you can see like there, there's a good reason. I mean, we don't want to check in 22 megabytes of Python binaries and libraries and other crap when really we just have like a few very small text files that actually make up our project. That whole VM directory is going to be recreated using the requirements.txt file anyway later. You don't need to know that or anything. It's just that's just what it is. Um, so we're going to add our current directory with git add. That actually adds, well, in this case, everything. Uh, we could also put the path to a specific file instead of this directory. That just says add everything in this directory to, to our next commit. And then when we do git status, we can see them in green. To actually commit them, you type in git commit. And the message that you can type in, you can either do with a dash m or by default, if you just type git commit, it will open whatever your default editor is. You can check by saying echo space dollar sign editor, all caps, and that will show you what your shell thinks your default editor is. It'll be something like Vim or Nano, usually. So, But we're going to commit this with a message that we pass on the command line, not in an editor. And that's how we do it. So you can see that it's created all these files in git. So they're, they're now in the uh, git directory. That's where that state is being kept. And if you check the git log, you can see our commit in there uh, along with the message that we left in it. So now what we want to do is create a new repository on GitHub so that we can open source this and have other developers take a look or work on our project with us. You got to give this thing a name. Python bundle scraper will do for now. We're also going to give it a description. And then you can select whether you want this to actually be public and open source or private. I think you need a paid account for private repositories. If you want uh, free private repositories, Bitbucket, I think bitbucket.org is a good alternative to GitHub. But GitHub's like the 500 pound gorilla of this. So, In our case, we don't want to initialize this repository with anything because we already have a local repository. So these are the instructions for creating a local repository, a new one. But we want the second option, right? So we want to push an existing repository from the command line. And it even gives us the commands for that. So we're going to add a remote origin, which is just sort of like linked to that uh, Git repository in our GitHub account. And now we're going to git push upstream origin master. We're going to push our master branch upstream to our origin which we just added. So this running this is going to actually push our code 
into this repository. When you actually do this the first time, you'll what it's doing is actually doing an SSH connection uh, up to GitHub. It's denying permission. So the first thing you'll have to do is uh, your SSH key, which you should already have. Um, you need the public key, which you get in your .ssh directory, and that'll be ID something like ECDSA or ID underscore RSA. If you don't have that yet, um, you can create it with uh, SSH dash keygen uh, dash T and then RSA, and you can do a, you can do dash B4096. Um, although you can find that in another video, but basically I'm just showing you the workflow here for actually then adding that key to uh, sort of as an allowed key on your GitHub account. You're just saying this public key, this key pair of which this is the public key, make sure you paste the pub key in there and not the private one. That's allowed to connect to my account via SSH. And you can see that working here. Now, when we retry that command, you just got to unlock that key. You got to decrypt it locally so it can be used. And then now that that key is in GitHub as an allowed key, GitHub's like, yeah, sure. Push it up. No problem. So now when you say git status, you can see that we're actually up to date with origin master and that we've pushed our local changes upstream. So the next time we make another commit, you would make that commit and then push again. In this case, we don't have anything to, we have no local changes that are committed, so nothing gets pushed. Um, there's some defaults that you can set. I'll leave it to you to read up on this, uh, but basically, you can just use the new behavior. Um, this is not going to bite you in the ass anytime soon. It's just for people that are used to how Git used to do things, um, this is useful. Again, you can see that without the long message once we've set that. You'll also want to set your um, your Git username and Git email usually, which will be sort of like tagged onto all of your commits as the metadata. But you can see here, now that we reload the page for our repository on GitHub, you can see all of that stuff, except for the stuff in our .gitignore file, has been actually pushed up to GitHub. So this is as up to date as the latest push from our local machine. For some further reading, I highly recommend ProGit. That book is available for free online, and I will make sure to drop the link in the description. Git is useful. It's extremely useful. However, Git is a complex and complicated tool that is not the most intuitive thing in the world. You actually do have to invest some time in learning it to actually become skilled with it. As a single developer, you're really just using Git to keep your keep your kind of like changes cleanly documented. You're using it to basically keep probably an offsite backup. I mean, GitHub is a way of storing a cheap offsite backup or things like Git, um, GitHub or Bitbucket of your code base. You know, until you start really interacting with other developers, you're pretty much safe just using these basic, basic things that I just showed you um, to, you know, add code and then making commits with that stuff and then pushing it to some upstream. So I just want to paint a little bit of that map for you uh, just to give you enough tools to go find out more. So for those that are interested, you know, definitely just start using Git right now with the basic stuff that I showed you. And then probably look at pro git to see what else git can do to see what's out there and how to do it so that's it i hope that's been helpful uh yeah leave a like and uh subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one peace